Um, yeah, so lately in my life, I've been actually going through, God's been putting me through a pretty interesting season that I've been going through. A season that I've never experienced my entire life, something that I never thought I would experience, something that prior to this, I would have been unhappy and miserable to experience. I would have been miserable and just hated it. I wouldn't have known what to do. And it's funny that this season that God's been taking me through really started when I decided to become a pastor. <laughs> And I'm not saying that being a pastor is bad, I'm just saying that you can test me now because I have the love of conviction and the trust. To, yeah. And so this, um, prior to this, like about four years ago when I was living at home with both my parents, everything was like provided for me. I was working every single day. I had abundance, an overabundance of everything. I had food every time I got home. I always had um, a car to drive, I always had a ride in general, and life was just really nice. And then recently, more specifically when I decided to become a pastor, I just noticed just how all these little comforts I had are just gone now. It's like when I get home, I live with my brother now and two roommates. It's so rare for me ever to see food there, and so now I've become much more appreciative of whenever I'm at someone's house and I get dinner from them. I finally now appreciate a home-cooked meal, really. I really do. And just the feeling of the uncertainty of life, I've been really facing it and seeing how uncertain life can be, especially financially. And I see, and I can understand why people, when they give offerings, they're just like, oh, I don't want to, I'm gonna hold on to it. I need every little bit I need for whatever, whether it just be like bills or finances, or if it's just things we want. I've learned that um, when we don't give, usually comes out of a place of fear because we don't know what the future holds, because we don't know if we're going to have enough, or even if it's just for something we want, we fear that we won't get what we want. And so, um, God's been really just taking me through the season where I have to depend on Him, how He wants me to, how He wants all of us to, how, you know, when you're a child and you have your parents there, and when you're like a really young child, like you're like four or five, you can talk, you can still remember things, that, that kind of child. When, and when you're a child, you just go up to your parent and you just expect food to be there. When, you, when it's time for dinner, you just expect certain things. You, you expect them to love you. You expect them to provide for you. It's never a thought like, oh, is this inconvenient for your schedule? Or, uh, can you afford this right now? Or, uh, am I being annoying right now? Or any of that. You don't even, that's not even a second thought. You're just like, oh, it's my parent. Yeah, of course they're going to provide for me. Of course it's going to be food when... I want it. Whenever I start crying for it, of course they're going to provide for me. It's just common knowledge. It's second nature. And that's how God wants us to be with Him. Not like a whining brat, like, oh, I want this, I want this, why aren't you giving me it? But just having that childlike dependency on Him where we just know He's going to take care of us, where we're going to just be obedient to Him and just have that trust and that faith and that confidence that in times of need, He's not just going to let us down. And so... Um, I've really been seeing and understanding that throughout the entire Bible, not once does God ever break a promise. He's a God, our God is a God of covenant. And never once, you can ask any theologian you know, whether they be a doctor or named Mr. Morrison, you can ask anyone you know throughout the entire Bible, not once has God ever broken a promise. There are a lot of instances where it may seem like it, but really it's just the humans being imperfect and messing up in some way. The best example, or a good example I have is with Abraham and um, Sarah. How, I may have told this before, but with how Abraham and Sarah and how God promised them a son who was going to be Isaac. And then um, Abraham was like, oh, maybe I should help God help me. And then you end up with um, Ishmael. And then you get this whole like two sides splitting up stuff. And so um, let's put up. Psalms 105 or 7, the message version, if you can, 7 through 8. I don't know if it's up, but I'm going to start reading it. It says, He's God, our God, in charge of the whole earth, and He remembers, remembers His covenant. For a thousand genera uh, generations, He's been as good as His word. God will never break a promise with us. Even if we start to fear, even if we start to doubt Him, even if we start running away from Him, and doing things opposite to what he wants and what he knows is bad for us. He still won't break his promise. We will break a promise with him all the time, but he still doesn't get mad. But one thing that I've been noticing when I give, 
and when I'm dependent on him, it gets easier. It gets a lot easier, especially now in my life when I don't have nearly as much, when I barely have money, when I barely have food, it's much easier to give um, because I know that I'm going to be taken care of, because I know that in my suffering, he's going to help me through it, because I know he's my father and I know that he's going to help me no matter what I go through, because he has promised this to all of us, not only just to me, but to everyone, and we just have to learn to be dependent on him. So when you give today, just know that whether you're kind of worried and shaky about paying a bill, or you're worried and shaky about having enough money for food or anything, he'll take care of you. So, right before the ushers come up, let's just put up Psalms 119, verse 50. You can do that out of me. And it says, My comfort in my suffering is this. Your promise preserves my life. Alright, ushers, if you'd come up. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, our Dad, thank you so much for just being a parent to us. Thank you so much for always providing to us, even when we're a disobedient child, Father. Thank you so much for just being a God of covenant, being a God that will never break promises, a God who will always take care of us through every trial, through every strife of God. We thank you so much, and we give this offering to you just to say thank you so much for always providing for us, even when we're in times of doubt and in times of need, God. You will always take care of us. And we thank you, and we bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.